Hello, I welcome you all for the topic on design of experiments. Uh, this is an introductory topic. This video deals with only introduction concept in design of experiments. Here we'll look into what is design of experiment. What are the basic terminologies involved in design of experiments? Then the different types. So this video lecture is going to be on basic concepts only. Uh, usually when we do the experiment, um, we may do it random, randomly. Randomly in the sense you just perform an experiment, analyze the result and leave it like that. So you may not be able to identify a suitable outcome or uh, justifiable outcome out of it. One thing. Second one, we may not do the experiment in a concise or a particular order. By doing uh, a random experiment, we may not be able to identify whether there is any uh, kind, any kind of error or noise involved in that experiment, whether the result is significant enough. You repeat the experiment, you are supposed to get the similar results again and again. Whether we get that, you won't be able to identify it. So we perform an experiment which is designed in the sense, designed in the sense it is uh, uh, performed in a particular order. A set of experiments that are already predefined. This is the way we have to do it. While doing this, we come across certain concepts. Now, let us look into three important basic principles that are involved in a statistical experimental design. Now, the, the reason why we say statistical experiment design, design because there is a close link between statistics and design of experiment. Once we perform the experiments, we perform statistical analysis on that. In order to do, perform the statistical analysis, we require certain amount of data set. Now that is exactly obtained from designing the experiment. So that is how we usually call it as statistical design of experiments. All right, we'll coming back to the basic principle in all three important topics are uh, combined, I mean, included in the statistical principles, uh, experimental principles. One, replication second randomization third one blocking these three are quite common information that you will see replication nothing but it's a repetition of experiment what you're performing you will have to do it again under the same experimental condition without changing anything so whatever an experiment number one is come perform same way exactly the same way it has to be performed again that's the replication or you can call it as repetition so that is useful in identifying how much amount of errors are involved, natural errors are involved, you will be able to identify. Whether it is repeatable, you will be able to find out. Second one is randomization. Randomization refers to the order in which the experiment have to be performed. Nothing but you may experiment, you may perform experiment one, two, three. Uh, there may be four set experiment that have been planned. So randomization in the sense, it's not that you perform the experiment in this particular order, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you may have to perform it in a different order, random order. In the sense, the experiment may be fourth may be first, third experiment, you may do it third position like that, like 4, 2, 3, 1, 4, 1, 3, 2, in a particular random order, you'll be performing. This avoids uh, ambiguous um, results. For example, if I call the attendance class attendance in a USN order. It is a biased order. Biased order in the sense the student who is having the US third USN, third in the row, he knows that he will be called soon after the second person. So it is student number one, student number two, student number three. So his row time will come at third position. So that is not randomization. So randomization is nothing but calling out any number. If there are about 40 students, any one number I'll call it first any number in the second so all will be for example in terms of alertness in terms of unbiasedness all will be equally counted when I count call call the names so that's randomization blocking is another term here blocking in the sense sometimes it may so happen that the factor which we are not so interested we may not be interested in certain factor but it comes as part and parcel of the experiment. You may not be able to avoid it. Just to avoid any errors that may encounter from your experimental design, you will block it. 
just to ensure at a later stage that it may not be affecting or if it is affecting in any order you can identify it uh, let us look at that details in the uh, coming up uh, topics because that will be uh, frequently using so for time being blocking is nothing but you will be setting up your experimental components in a particular uh, title or it's actually a factor it's actually a parameter that you want to define now the advantage of all this is you the sources of variability so uncertainties you want to reduce it so whether there exists any amount of uncertainty or not you can identify using statistics so that is we will be doing the ANOVA analysis of variance so uh, perform by performing that you will be able to identify whether the variation is because of natural variations or because of your experimental conditions going little backside uh, with the history it's somewhere in 1920s it was started with the F test so Ronald Fisher uh, who's the key pioneer in uh, establishing the F test then came up with the new models of uh, box Wilson model for his response surface methodologies then uh, involved with the included with the Taguchi designs in fact it was one of the controversial designs anyways doesn't matter so we are still using the these mechanisms under design of experiments some more terminologies let us look into design of experiments one is the factor so factor or the parameters what it means is a variable you want to use for example temperature is a variable pH is a variable now these are factors so normally factors are nominal variables so nominal variable is just they are named factors are always named they do not have a, they may not they may not have any number usually so they are always named now the next one is design space or region of interest it's nothing but range you can call it as a range so this value to this value so you have defined yourself a limit to your entire experimental set beyond that experimental set whatever you perform may not be valid so whatever you perform it's valid within the region of interest now if you say factor say room temperature 30 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius if you have designed temperature the variable or the factor you are taking temperature the value for that variation you have started with the room temperature 30 maximum 50 so 30 to 50 is your region of interest if anything happens at 60 degree or 20 degree you are not performed the experiment it means it's beyond your region of interest it's beyond the design space so our entire design of experiment is within this region normally these factors as i said earlier it's a nominal variable now we have to number it we have to give certain variations within this so we use something called as levels level is nothing but the value you want to use for performing the experiment usually this level again could be a nominal value or a numerical value quantitative value now quantity for example the same thing let me take temperature or a pH say for example temperature you want to perform experiment at 30 degree 40 degree 50 degree so that 30 40 50 becomes level so there are three levels for the given factor 30 degree 40 degree and 50 degree let me take another case you want to perform um, uh, 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 fermentation with the three different microorganisms so the microorganisms type of microorganism becomes the factor which type do you use do you want to use yeast saccharomyces do you want to use a bacillus or do you want to use some other microorganism along uh, as a variable with that so maybe bacteria 1 bacteria 2 and bacteria 3 so that level is bacteria 1 bacteria 2 bacteria 3 so they have certain names say for example bacillus uh, streptococcus like that so three different names you have they are the levels remember they are not number they are uh, they are no name they say they are the nominal variables in this case now this is one of the important issue here so when you start with the experiment design of experiment at first there is no knowledge of the solution space that means before you start anything from the scratch when you start you do not know anything about your experimental domain and it may happen that region of experiment excludes the optimum design the region of interest what you have chosen may not be the your actual result what you want to for example you have taken the temperature i said 30 to 50 degrees celsius 
you want to you have performed the experiment without your knowledge you start with 30 and up to 50 it may so happen that optimal value for your temperature the best temperature value for your experimental condition may be 15 degrees celsius on 5 15 degrees celsius so that means it is out of your the optimal condition is out of your region of interest you will have to rework on that so this may this is quite common so when you start you do not know about it you don't have any knowledge you start with the 20 you end up with 50 you may find that it you may not get a proper result so you may have to expand your design of uh, region of interest now why do we do what do we do with the end of this experiment once you perform the experiment you end up with one result so i said some factors earlier levels also so you will find out some variable some value as the output that is objective function we call it as response variable maybe the biomass concentration you want to, or you want to produce some product some protein you want to produce some uh, carbohydrate you want to produce some uh, product maybe uh, like ethanol or the biomass itself so th all this become your response variable maybe some uh, organic acid you want to produce all those become response variable but always remember response variable is usually a numerical value quantitative value response variable needs to be quantitative value the reason is we are performing statistical analysis based on this value as the output this will be the output of your design of experiment and it same becomes input for the statistical analysis and all our statistical analysis are based on f test which requires continuous variable continuous variables are the uh, numbers so your response variable should be a numerical value and a continuous variable in fact it should be a continuous variable otherwise you may not be able to perform statistical analysis you can uh, classify the factors as two different categories based on the experimental factor and classification factor experimental factors nothing but you can uh, specify and then assign it to a random at the treatment to the experimental unit classification errors uh, factors are nothing but they are already labeled pre-labeled you can't do anything for example experimental factor means something like uh, temperature or uh, it could be uh, additive fertilizer name of that so all this becomes your experimental factor you can you have to name it whereas classification factors are predefined gender you cannot rename male and female that is prefixed the names are prefixed so you cannot select any other levels for that factor and so says gender it becomes male and female so once you say age children uh, adult uh, old age people so that becomes a standard uh, level whereas here you can uh, redefine your own values temperature you can take 30 40 50 or you want to take 80 90 100 whatever value of level you want to take you can take it so that is one kind of classification another kind of classification is quantitative factor and qualitative factor quantitative factor we already seen this quantitative factor for example as uh, sorry this is uh, yeah this is little old uh, i mean reverse here okay uh, the quantitative factor the quantitative factor is ph temperature glucose concentration there is qua uh, the qualitative factor the qualitative factor uh, is uh, gender uh, microbial uh, names as we have taken it already uh, all this becomes uh, <coughs> uh, qualitative factors uh, gender microbial strain names or any name of the medium you take they become uh, qualitative factors whereas uh, quantitative factor is numbered now how do we perform the experiment steps or plan how do we do it first you have to identify the problem what exactly is your problem input and outputs choice of factor level and ranges that means which are which is the factor what should be its level should be two level three level or multiple levels what should be the range least value maximum value of that uh, factor get a given level response variable what exactly you want to find out as the experimental output choice of the design there are n number of experimental designs available we will choose one based on the requirement that we will be studying a little later perform the experiment so this is planning up to here it is planning 
then you will perform the experiment conduct the experiment step number five conduct the experiment physically you have to go to the lab and conduct the experiment it could be a virtual experiment also but you will end up with the result response variable that's what we call the response variable will be outcome of the step five using that response variable as input you will perform statistical analysis all our statistical analysis here is based on the f test ANOVA f test or ANOVA then based on the result you will draw the conclusion or you may recommend or you may do with a different set of experiment so this is how planning conducting analyzing so you will plan the experiment you will conduct the experiment and then you will analyze the experiment this entire series of experimental uh, the complete set of uh, experiment I mean, you can analysis planning conducting analyzing the entire thing is called as statistical design of experiments now these are the different types one is RCT randomized control design it's also called as uh, randomized complete design trial complete trial RCT or RCT equivalently same another one is randomized control block design when the block comes into picture here this is superior version of RCT RCBD is a superior version of RCT the special type of RCBD is Latin square design so Latin square design is a special type of RCBD so RCBD is a generalized form Latin square is a specialized form then we'll look into the full factorial designs full factorial designs are different types there two level full factorial or three level full factorial then advanced version we'll have so that is uh, uh, central composite designs you might have heard about these names response surface design there you have two types non-rotatable and rotatable non-rotatable are generally called as ccd central composite designs another one rotatable is a central composite rotatable design usually the response surface designs usually done uh, with the default alpha values anyways you will come to know what is that alpha later so ccrd is a centrally uh, universally done experiment ccrd another one called as box bank and design this is a different version of uh, ccrds then comes the fractional factorial design this is uh, uh, another version of uh, full factor is a part, part of the fract uh, full factorial designs fractional factorial design there are different types most commonly used one is for biotechnological application is plaquette vermin design for uh, normally these fractional factorial designs are used for uh, certain purpose individual applications uh, such as uh, you want to uh, identify important factors screening experiments that are called so for that you will be using plaquette Berman designs even Taguchi design is also used so based on your requirement you will choose the experiment if you are interested in studying a single factor only one factor with the two or more treatment levels minimum two levels more than two levels you can use but remember only one factor you will use RCD if you have one factor but you have to block with another factor called as nuisance factor so you will use RCBD so here there are two factors in fact if there are two or more factors you have more than two factors you will go for full factorial designs and uh, most importantly here fractional factorial designs this fractional factorial design you will use it only when you want to screen the factor screening the factor or if you want to do the optimization as a further level of that if you want to optimize the after screening you want to optimize them you will use CCD or CCRD experiment so uh, revising what we have done so in summary we have seen what is design of experiment uh, what is uh, uh, what are the different uh, terminology basic principles uh, that is uh, uh, replication replication randomization and blocking then we have seen the terminology such as a factor uh, then the uh, region of interest levels and also we have seen response variable we have seen the classification of factors and most importantly steps involved in planning conducting and analyzing the experiment also types of TOE. Thank you.